What's up, guys? This is Brave, and I am back to review another season of Ready to Love. I believe this is season seven, I think. That's what they're going by. All I know is that we are back in Miami for another season, and let's jump right into it. As you know, the show has completely cut the uh, preview episode where they usually show all the cast members and that way we can know a little bit more about them and why they're on this show. So let's just jump right in. So we first start off and we meet Andre. Y'all, Andre is 39 years old. He has shown up wearing this bright purple lilac lavender jacket. And this one tendril hanging down his face as if he is a member of the group Ready for the World from the goddamn 80s. I said, I know we not starting off like this. I know we are not starting off like this. (laughs) You can't make this type of stuff up. I'm sorry. I don't understand how any of the ladies took Andre serious with that one tendril hanging down his face. Nonetheless, that's where we started. I said, all right, oh, Sheila. All right, so the first ladies who arrived was actually Carvana. She was there and, you know, she had on her green dress. She looks really pretty, but I think that she's young. Like, she was like 31 years old. I don't know how that's going to go over with this group because I feel like sometimes when the women are younger, you know, they get eliminated because like, oh, they're too young. But she's very pretty, so she'll probably stick around. So, I'm going to have to be real honest, y'all. This review, it might be all over the place because I'm going to be jumping around. That's because of the way this episode was shot and the way they pieced it together. I'm sorry, but I actually miss the old way of us getting, like, the intro of who everybody is. But, yeah, just follow along. So, we also meet Natasha. She's an attorney. Her storyline is that... She's a workaholic, but now she's ready to settle down or whatever, and she's ready for love. You know, she has actually been engaged to before, but that clearly did not work out. And then we also meet Z, who I feel like is more of our, like, natural hair girl. Honestly, I really was not paying attention to what she was talking about. I was trying to figure out what her dress was doing. Like, that orange dress should not have been the first dress that we saw her in on this show. I'm sorry, I was not feeling it. Um, I will say that she talked about how she likes to baby her men and I'm just like, baby them. Girl, <laughs> let's not do that. Y'all, we also met Dre and I'm like, okay. <laughs> he's gonna go home because he's short, first off. I could already see that coming. But when he decided to spit some bars drop some beats you know what i'm saying i was like oh no this is as bad as when that one man came through with his spoken word poetry we didn't want to see that then i don't want to hear this now sorry i am not here for him being 39 years old talk about he a rapper goodbye sir so then we also meet Lyndon, and we learn that he is a bartender and here's the thing <laughs> I said, well, we're not about to keep doing Ready to Love is recasting people who all have the same jobs that we've already seen. Now, we have was Natasha. She was an attorney, just like Simone. We have uh, Dre, who's a DJ, just like what was that guy who they brought back? Uh, Y'all know who I'm talking about. He dated the girl Amber. And now you have um, this guy who's just like Frank. I'm like, oh, is this what we do? We just going to keep repeating this? And of course, we brought somebody on this season that's a flight attendant. I'm like, all right, (laughs) ready to love casting. We can do better. We can. And speaking of Lyndon, he has an accent. I think he's like, I don't know, he has to be, like, from some type of island. I'm not sure which one yet, but, yeah, that's where he's from. Now, I actually want to move on to Marcia. So, Marcia is actually a fashion designer. I'm not sure if she has, you know, a real line or if she just has, like, T-shirts with sayings on it. I'm not sure, but she says that she's a fashion designer. Marcia loves on herself. Clearly, she has been on a self-care journey because she would marry herself if she probably could. Um, 
she actually ended up talking to the guy Blue, which I cannot lie to me. Blue is a decent looking man who was in his 40s. Now, I don't know if he's actually 40. I think we could add a couple of years, but he's not a bad looking guy as far as who we've already been introduced to. Um, he is a lounge owner, at least is what the title they gave him. He said he owns a liquor store. He also owns a hookah lounge. I said, ooh, see, now there is a difference here. You have the guy who owns the lounge versus the bartender. See, there is a clear difference here. We're going to go ahead and ride out with Blue. <laughs> All right, so the next thing that happens is Tommy shows up. Of course, he has to talk to the singles. So, Tommy actually lets them know that there's piss in the dating pool. I said, whoa, that's where we're going with this? Y'all, here's the thing. They bring out Rashid and Simone. Because as we know, they're engaged or whatever. And I guess you could say that their journey started on the show, but not really. Because he only went on one date with her. Because he was chasing after that one girl who did not want him. Because he was the safe guy. I'll say this. It was nice to see them. However, they should have came on at a later time in the show. Like, I'm sorry. We're supposed to be getting to know these new people. And they're supposed to be getting to know each other. Why are we doing Q&A with Rashida Simone on the first episode? Make that make sense. So, we meet Mercedes. She is a flight attendant. And we happen to see her talking to Anthony. Now, Anthony is 39. He has a daughter. I don't know how old his daughter is, but from the photo, she looks like she's under the age of five. And according to um, Mercedes, she's ready to play stepmommy. I'm like, girl, <laughs> get into the relationship first and then try to build a relationship with a man with some kids. Okay. All right. So then we got this other scene with Rashida and Simone. And honestly... I'm not exactly interested in the conversations that were had with Rashid and Simone. No offense to them, but I'd rather talk about the couples, or not even the couples, the people trying to get to know each other. Which brings me to the conversation between Morgan and Tony. So y'all, Tony is supposed to be a text director. I don't know exactly what that means. Like, did he, is he like the top notch of the tax business or what? Just trying to figure that out. Nonetheless, they have this conversation or whatever. We learn that he has two children. He has two boys. And she's actually interested in him having two boys because she's only been raised around women. And she's like, oh, you know, it's time for some boys anyways. And he liked that about her. Um, we also learned that when it comes to his parents, they were not together like that. It sounded like a, a random hookup and boom, somebody got pregnant. But that, I mean, that happens. Let's be honest, that definitely happens. So we m learn more about Morgan, and she's like a really Christian, God-fearing woman. And they actually bond on their connection with God. And I'm like, okay, this might work. But what I don't want is for this to be anything like Liz and that other guy. I can't remember what his name was, but y'all know, the one who flipped out on her. Yeah, they tried to have God at the base of their relationship, and we saw where they, that got us. But let's go ahead and move on, because now I want to talk about Demario Carvana. Oh, shoot. I just realized her name is Corvea. <laughs> That's her name. Corvea. Carvana is the car company. Sorry, girl. So, <laughs> Corvea and Lyndon were talking, and... First things first, Demario talking about some what kind of shoes, what kind of heels you like, and I'm like, that is a weird, random question. Do you have a foot fetish? Cause that was not an average question that anybody would ask somebody. Or am I crazy? Nonetheless, he asked her the question, and she was like, "Oh, I like uh, pricier shoes." And I'm just like, girl, what's pricey? Like, are you rocking like Alexander Wangs? Are we out here with Jimmy Choo's Louboutins? Like, what is going on? I'm so confused with this conversation. So let me go back and start talking about these people. Um, Demario, he actually is a accountant and he wants him a baddie. So Corvea is definitely fitting that description of what he wanted, but I'm like, you want a baddie? 
sir, you need to find a woman with some substance because everything you're listing don't mean nothing. Like women buy hair all the time. You over worried about a, a 50 inch weave. You are worried about her having ass. Like again, people buy things all the time. Hell, they have slim thick BBLs. Like what are we talking about? Like, where is the, oh, I want a woman who has a good spirit. I want someone who makes me laugh. Someone who's like something. I was just like, all right, we're going to see how long you going to last on the show. Because I don't know if what you're looking for is here. I mean, it may be here, but we need some substance behind it. And then we learn a little bit more about him. We learn that he's actually really into fashion, according to him. Now, I would not say... He's like a very snazzy dresser, but, you know, people have their own personal style. Now, I will say, when Corvea asks him, like, oh, do you go to therapy? And he's like, yeah, I've been to therapy. At this point, I'm just starting to think that therapy is the new church. Like, you know how people used to ask, like, oh, do you go to church or whatever? And, of course, the guy would be like, yeah, I go to church, even though he only went on Easter Sundays. Like... I just feel like at this point, everybody says they go to therapy, not that they're continuing therapy. Like they're not currently in it, but they've been there one time. Or am I the only one who feels this way? Because there ain't no way you're going to tell me that everybody is just therapying it up. Okay. Especially men. I'm sorry. I think there are some people who go, but I don't think that every man is really out here just in therapy consistently especially when they still be carrying over these toxic traits now i'm not trying to put that on this man i'm just saying overall i feel like there has been a shift in dating or just in people in general where everybody's like yeah i'm in therapy yeah i'm in therapy but they still ain't has had no changes like everybody's still acting the same so i'm confused but nonetheless that's a rant for a whole nother day So the question was, what was her biggest deal breaker? And she says independence. Now, where I thought that was going (laughs) was not where it went. So I thought she was saying, like, if he still doesn't allow me to be an independent person or something, like if he doesn't want me to still, you know, have my career and all this stuff, then that would be like a deal breaker because I'm not someone who wants to, like, sit at home. Oh, but no, she was talking about, like, if he is having a roommate. I was like, oh, (laughs) that's not even what I thought of. Yeah, so if the guy has a roommate, she ain't interested because how can he take care of her when he has to share a space with somebody else? Lyndon, go ahead and exit stage left. He talks about how he has a roommate. Now, again, I'm not trying to justify, but let's be honest. This show takes place where? In Miami. Miami is a very expensive city, and this guy is a bartender. I don't know how much bartenders make every month or every week or whatever. But one thing I do know that he ain't balling like that. Like, he not balling for real, for real. So, I can see why he got a roommate. Now, I will say that's probably the most honest anybody has been on this show. Because I wouldn't be surprised if there were guys in previous seasons who had roommates. Or even women who have roommates. Who knows? That topic has never come up before. But, yeah... I don't know how long Lyndon going to last once all the rest of the women find out his living situation. Because I don't think a lot of these women on this show would be interested in that. But let's go ahead and move on. So we actually see Dre and Marcia have a conversation. I was like, boy, you are about to go home. Right then, right there, it's over for you. He had this awkward conversation with her about dating apps and kissing and I'm like where is your conversation about getting to know her and like what she likes to do or talk about what you like to do hell anything but this Dre is definitely going home so we next see um Jeffrey and Andre have a conversation Mr. Tendril um so Jeffrey has three kids we also learn she's an executive assistant and she also is a spiritual person whatever that means because I don't really know she didn't really go that far into detail but it's giving crystals and sage and energy and all of that now here's my only thing Andre 
Don't waste this woman's time. And what I mean by that, she already let you know she has kids. And I'm pretty sure he may have asked and they just didn't air like how many kids you got, whatever. This woman has three kids. If you're not ready to take on the responsibility of dating a woman with three kids, don't play in her face and don't waste her time. Because I feel like a lot of times people do not consider what it actually takes to date someone with children. Now, I don't have children myself. However, I do understand that, number one, those kids are going to come first. Number two, she has to balance, or whoever the parent is, the parent has to balance finding time to date you as well as finding time with their children. And also, when it comes to you meshing with their children at some point, because if you're not willing to really rock out and be with these kids like that, then don't date someone who has children because there's definitely women here who don't have children. I'm just saying don't waste their time. I think that depending on what Jeffrey wants, I'm not sure if Jeffrey wants to have more children or not, but I think that she might want to check out some of these guys who already got kids, you know, so that way y'all can kind of be on the same page when it comes to these kids. I'm just saying, but let's go ahead and move on. So we actually meet Blake. He's talking to Natasha. Nothing came out of this besides us learning that he's a corporate security guard. I mean, a corporate security officer. Sounds like a fancy security guard. And we also learned that he is very direct and he definitely took control of that conversation because he was just spitting out questions and she never got to ask him anything, which was very strange. Like, that is not a conversation. You out here doing Q&A with her. Um, oh, we also learned that he does not want more children because he already has three kids. Um, the oldest being, like, 22. I can't remember how old the youngest was. And I'm just like, okay, that's fine. This man is 44 years old. I don't know that many 44-year-olds that want to keep starting over with these kids. Like, let's be honest here. So Blake does not want children anymore. So we then saw Simone and Rashid again. At this point, it was time for them to leave. They said their, you know, advice that they would give each person or whatever so that they could continue on the journey, blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, Rashid, he actually ends up proposing to Simone. And I'm like, okay, this was sweet. Now I understand why they brought y'all back on the show so that way he can propose and it'll be like this cute moment. Good for Rashid and Simone. Wish them the best. Now let's go ahead and move on. So we then see Demario and he's talking to Z. I said, look at y'all matching. But the conversation was not matching according to him. So she was asking him about like, you know, what's his family like? And we learned that he actually had a sister that passed away from breast cancer. He's family oriented and all this stuff. But then we got to the questions that he was asking her and he asked her like, you know, like what didn't work out in your previous relationships? And she basically said that she jumped the gun and she would jump into relationships extremely fast. Once a guy would ask like, oh, you want to be my girlfriend instead of taking things slower, which okay, at least she can admit that that was her fault. So then they have this conversation about how she likes an alpha male, but she can also be an alpha female. Sometimes, you know, there are times where she's like, you know, you can take care of everything. And then there's sometimes when she can be more dominating. Now, I honestly feel like that was where the conversation went left with them. I feel like once he heard her say that she could be an alpha female, he didn't like that. Because I'm like, the conversation that they had wasn't bad because he was like, oh, I don't I didn't end the conversation knowing what kind of man she was looking for. You didn't ask her those types of questions. So (laughs) I'm confused. You didn't ask her that you wanted to know um, what happened in her previous relationships, not what she's currently looking for. Make that make sense. I honestly feel like because she said that alpha female, he was like, nah, that's not the type of woman I'm looking for. Also, I will say that at least this girl had a sense of humor because she was like, oh, would you date someone who's a virgin? And he was like, I'm open. But then when she was like, oh, well, I'm a virgin. And he was like, his facial expression told me everything. Like, you ain't that open. But she was joking. Like, 
I'm like, at least this girl is trying to be funny. You know what I'm saying? Now, let's go ahead and jump over to this conversation because we have Blue, Blake, Corvea, and I want to say it was Mercedes there, and I think maybe Morgan. So, anyways, Corvea acts like, oh, you guys are in your 40s. Do you have children? So, they do. Blake has three children, and then we also learned that Blue has a five-year-old. I said, okay, cool. So, she's like, okay, well, do you guys want more children? Blue never got a chance to answer. If he did, we don't know what he said because Blake was like, yeah, I'm 87% sure I'm not trying to have no more kids, a.k.a. no girl. I don't want no kids at all. Don't even think about it. Don't come this way if you want children. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like That was the general consensus. I don't know where he got that random 87 number from, but sir, you don't want them kids. Let's stop playing. And when he mentioned that he had those kids at three different stages of his life, I absolutely do believe it because he has one that is 22. He has one that is in their like early teenage, maybe like 12, 13, somewhere around, somewhere around there. And then he has one that's like under the age of 10. I said, yeah, you was at three different stages of your life. It's time to go ahead and pull the plug, buddy. So Mercedes definitely peeps game that, you know, this is not the man for her because even though she told him, oh, that would be like a discussion. Girl, it ain't no discussion. Even her confessional, she was like, yeah, he don't want no kids. And then you have Corvea, who's like, you know, I'm not sure if I can date a man who doesn't want children. I said, okay, great. This conversation could have been done right here and there because y'all are none of y'all are on the same page. He don't want kids. Clearly y'all are young. Like Corvea and Mercedes are probably the youngest girls here. Y'all want kids. Move on to somebody else. Because Blake is not what you want. Now what got me was that Blue, he ain't had to say nothing this whole damn conversation because Blake done took it over. So then some other guys come over and Blake is like, okay, well, you can do everything as a as a mother, blah say blah. But if the father isn't in the home, then that child is broken. And I'm like, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, sir. Because now I need to know how involved you are in your own kid's life. Because you have three children, three different stages. Are you the weekend dad? Or are you actually like heavily involved? You got the kids four times out the week. That's my question. Because how are you going to sit here and give a lecture about a broken child because they don't have a two-parent household? Honestly, if I really want to break some things down, I hate this concept that we have blew out of proportion. Yes, I want to say we blew it out of proportion as far as kids need to have a two parent household. Let's be real. It's not realistic. Okay, every relationship is not going to work out so that your child is going to come from a two parent household. It ain't. Like, let's be honest here. Do you really think as many single mothers as we have in this world, they wanted to be single mothers? No, <laughs> that was never the goal for most people. I don't understand how we even get to this concept of a child being broken. If we really break that down, that is a societal thing that we have put on people because we see that other people come from something and we think that we all need the same. And what I mean by that is, oh, when you see a two-parent household, like, oh my gosh, that kid is getting the best of both worlds. That is not always true. There's a bunch of absentee parents who live in the household. And what I mean by that is, yeah, your child can definitely have a mom and a dad, but that doesn't mean they do anything with that child. And not to mention... There's always one parent who is more active than the other, even if there is a, you know, co-parenting situation. A lot of times, unfortunately, it's not a 50-50 co-parenting thing. It's, oh, one parent will see you on the weekends and someone's going to see you all five days out the week. So a lot of times co-parenting is not balanced. Um, also, another thing. People who always talk about how kids will be broken if they only have one parent. Well, I'm sorry, but a lot of times things happen and you're going to have only one parent. For example, if your parent passes away when you're young, 
you're probably going to grow up with only one parent unless your uh, parent who's still alive is going to redate. And some people, they don't. You know what I'm saying? You have that situation. And then you also have situations to where your one parent was not good to the other or good to those children. If there's abuse in the household, yeah, you need to go ahead and get away from that person. So I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just so over this concept of you have to have two, both of your parents involved in your life. When sometimes people got some jacked up parents and we've definitely heard the horror stories of abuse in people's household and trauma. And sometimes you do have a parent who will take you out of that situation for the better. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? I done got way off topic. Let me go ahead and jump back into this damn show. (laughs) So now it's time for the deliberations to happen and for us to find out who the ladies and the guys are feeling and who they're not feeling. So when it comes to the guys, they are not feeling Z and they are not feeling Natasha. And then when it comes to the ladies, they are not feeling Blake and they are not feeling Dre. So when it comes down to the ladies, who went home? Natasha. Z fights to see another day. And then when it comes to the guys, Dre ended up going home. I honestly thought that Blake was going to go home because a lot of those ladies looked like they were young and that they wanted children. But Dre was kind of awkward. He basically went home because he was short. And that was that. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I think that this season might be pretty interesting. Fingers crossed. <laughs> because y'all know, Ready to Love, as of lately, it has been very up and down. We start off all right, and then it just tanks. But hopefully this season is good. Let me know what y'all thought about the episode. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I'll talk to y'all in the next review. Bye, guys. <laughs>